Good evening, dear church. Welcome, guests. Thank you for visiting us this evening. We're continuing to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I would like everyone to open their Bibles to Luke 24. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices and they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But, they, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down to their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? In other words, he said, why do you go to the cemetery to look for somebody who's alive? Then he says, he is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he, while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners. Be crucified and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered those words. Because Jesus already told them what was going to happen. And when they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, and mother, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But look, the apostles' reactions. But they did not believe the woman because their words seemed like nonsense, almost foolishness. Peter, however, got up, ran to the tomb, bending over. He saw the stripes of linen lying by themselves. And he went away wondering, hmm, what happened? He forgot what Jesus told him. Jesus let them know exactly what was going to happen. Why didn't they believe? It's because of what they saw. They saw Jesus being beaten. Then they saw them lifting Jesus to the cross. Then they saw Jesus dying on the cross, going to the tomb. And what they saw with their eyes, blinded to what the Spirit was saying. They were blinded to the promise that God told them. And we know that when we read a little further in verse 27, doubting Thomas, then he said to Thomas, put your fingers right here, he said to him. Put your, reach your hand and put it into my side. He said, stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, you have believed, but look what he says. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. We didn't see Jesus on the cross. We didn't see Jesus beaten. We didn't see Jesus die. But at the same time, when we walk in our life, and it gets hard. And what we see with our eyes sometimes lie to us. Because we are blinded with our spirit about the promises that God told us. And we don't see it. And we get into despair. We get into depression. Because we feel like Jesus is not next to us. We can live our whole life having two eyes, but be blind to what the Spirit of God tells us. And as I read now from Romans 8, I want you all to look with your spiritual eyes of the promise that God told us, especially when we go through trials 
And some could even close their eyes if you want to. Let's see what the Word of God says in Romans 8. And it's verse 31. It's titled, Nothing Can Separate Us from God's Love. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him for us all, won't, we, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. God put us right next to himself. Who then will condemn us? Basically, who will speak evil of us? No one, for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. He is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us, for you and me. Can anything separate us from Christ's love in verse 35? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or if we're persecuted or if we're hungry or in des destitute or in danger or threatened with death? In verse 37, no, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours. It means we win through Christ who loved us. Verse 38, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither de death nor life. Let's stop right there. Neither death nor life. Did you know last week in Sri Lanka, a group of kids, maybe a little less than this, were preparing to go into the service on the, on the Easter Sunday. They were preparing outside as they were going to go into the service. Kids just like you. And the teacher asked them, today is Easter. And the teacher asked them, how many of you would die for Jesus? And all of them rose their hand and said, we will die for Jesus. As they come into the church, a bad man walks into church and does something really bad. And almost all the children die and a lot of people in the congregation. And I was thinking how scary that is. That could be my kids up there. And with my, my parental eyes looking at those kids and seeing that bad situation and where you think where Jesus is. Neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Do you believe? Can you see Jesus with your spiritual eyes? Because we can't see him with our physical eyes. I could tell you that. If we do, we are safe. And I want to end in these words as he said to Thomas. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Amen.